Welcome to the afternoon. Oh man. Ooh. I've never done that before. <laughs> In 99 shows. <laughs> I've never flubbed the opening. Uh, oh. <laughs> Bring on a real OEM and I get all nervous. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> Guess what? I'm going to have to leave in too because it's so awkward. Anyway, okay. <laughs> Try again. Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Scott. I'm sorry, Scott. I'm really, I'm kind of messed up now. I've <laughs> never messed up. Oh, man. Oh. Anyway, welcome to the show. This is our podcast about anything and everything off road. We literally, tonight, will be very Jeep specific. It'll be great. Uh, Ross had a Jeep and then he got rid of it, which is probably not super. And I've had a Jeep, but I got rid of it a long time ago. And I grew up around Jeeps, so. Yeah, we can go lots of places here. Uh, But as always, we're socially distanced. We did it way before it was ever mandated. It's the only way we can do the show. Uh, Tonight, I'm still in Kansas City. Ross is still in Connecticut and Scott's in Michigan. So we've got the right half of the country covered. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, Yeah, it's the right side. Just not the South. No, not tonight. Uh, So Scott... (laughs) Do you want to introduce yourself? Do you want do you have a quick elevator pitch? Who you are and what you do? Well, no, not not necessarily, but okay. uh, I'll, I'll give you a quick overview. I'm you know, I'm the the brand director for product for the Jeep brand here in here in North America, and you know all this great new sheet metal that 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 we've been fortunate to roll out this year is 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 what I do every day. And you know, looking after the product, the current showroom. Uh, both immediate, midterm, and, and certainly long term, uh, looking at you know what is the, the the future showroom for Jeep look like. So, uh, the product director for the brand here in North America. See, I knew you'd do it better than I would. <laughs> <laughs> it is his job. So, Scott, how long have you been with Jeep, and what was your career that led you to mm-hmm. Jeep? Were you in marketing before? Were you in automotive before? Yeah, actually, really, really interesting. So I've been with the Jeep brand uh, since 2013 and, and must admit that, that my timing was impeccable. Right. I can say that, that we've been on this amazing run now for for eight years. And, that you know, it's all been since I started a Jeep. But um, it, it's just good, fortunate timing. But, it you know, prior to Jeep, I had been with. Uh, well, now Stellantis, uh, previously FCA, previously Chrysler LLC, previously Daimler Chrysler, and prior to that, actually was hired with Chrysler Corp in 1998. Oh. Um, I've spent a, a number of years, about 10 years, working directly with dealers in our field organization. So very familiar. I, I really love the sales part of it. I, I I'm a car guy to, to begin with, or I should say to begin with, I was a car kid. I mean, mm-hmm. I love cars when I was a little kid. Um, then as you grow up and you mature, you actually have to get a real job and think about these things. Um, it was, yeah, I always wanted to get in the, the automotive business. Wasn't sure in, you know, what capacity. And then, you know, fortunately I I saw an opportunity out of school. Uh, I jumped on board. I, I literally, my first position at Chrysler Corp was, um, at the call center. So when the 800 number you call, when you have an issue with your car and you're not happy, um, I, I, that was my very first job at, at Chrysler. And let me tell you, it was a great place to start because, um, you, you get real perspective that these are real customers with real products that, that have issues and it's impacting their life. So, you know, we, we take it very, very personal what we do every single day. But for me, it started very early on the passion for the automobiles, understanding the, co- the customer and, and their needs, their desires and, and how they live with these vehicles as a part of their daily lives. Um, you know, I got into the, the sales side of it, sales and marketing, yeah, for, for about 10 years before I switched over to the, the brand side of the business and really just wanted to be, you know, more further upstream and have a hands-on, you know, impact on the product we were delivering to the consumer. Um, since then, it's, it's been a, a, a phenomenal ride. And again, it's, it's all product driven over the last decade. Uh, it started with, you know, the prior, grand, uh, prior generation Grand Cherokee launching in 2010 and, you know, ever since then, it's been just a, you know, a succession of, of new products and, and refreshes and launches every year since then, it all really leading up to, to this year. And, and 2021 is a special year for Jeep because it's our 80th anniversary. So, 
you know, 80 years of, of, of capability, leadership, and, and really, uh, again, my job was to look at the next 80 years. And fortunately, to mark this anniversary, we have had our, our most comprehensive product offensive that we've ever had in our history. We've had more product launches, enhancements, and refreshes in 2021 than we have ever had. So, you know, truly an exciting year for me. Um, a lot of history in the car business, but this year for me has is, is been really just an absolute banner year with, with the product side of the house and clearly a very dynamic industry that we're all trying to, to manage through, but uh, something that's been a really exciting year for me personally. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> that's, yeah, so I have a lot of places I could go here. The first <laughs> question I have to tie into a lot of what you just mentioned um, we'll we'll go to the personal side of things with yourself and your own vehicles later. Okay. The things you mentioned about where Jeep is, where 2021 is for Jeep, where Jeep's going in the future. Are you finding that the electrification of Jeep products are being driven by the customer base? Or do you feel that Jeep is kind of steering the ship, bringing out the four by E's and pushing the brand into the future and bringing the customers along with it? You know, that, that, that's, a, that's a great question. And it's something that, that we have contemplated for years now, knowing that the industry must move to electrification. We all mm -hmm. must. It's, it's for compliance reasons, and we should, quite frankly. Um, yet, you know, when you look at the electrified marketplace, the, the consumer, the products that are being offered, um, there, was, there was a little bit of a stigma associated with them. They were a little bit boring. They were a little bit dull. There wasn't anything overly exciting unless you had you know, six figures and you mm -hmm. wanted to buy, you know, something really expensive, but for the mainstream, there really was not. And, you know, we looked at the Wrangler and here's the reality is we could have made a, a plug-in hybrid Wrangler and launched it in market probably three years ago. Mm -hmm. It would have been a pretty good plug-in. It would have been a horrible Wrangler. So, <laughs> you know, one of those pillars of Jeep is, is authenticity. So sure. yeah, I mean, if, if, you know, a trail rated badge, everything has to be done very authentically. So when we set out to electrify the very first Jeep, we said, let's do it with the icon of the brand. And let's face it, this is the most challenging one. And, and because you've got a lot of old technology, new technology, all blending together that have to work in a very, very unique um, in, in systematic way uh, to, to be as capable as it is. And the end result is, is not only, you know, a very capable Wrangler, but it was the most capable Wrangler that we have ever produced. Mm -hmm. The most fuel efficient Wrangler we could ever produce. Um, you know, on average, I read all the forums. I talk to a lot of customers. I mean, the, the baseline is about a thousand miles for every tank of gas that you're getting that's in a wild. Wrangler. Yeah, and, wild. you know, so, you know, they're getting a lot of benefit. They're not compromising any of that fun factor. So, yep, doors off. Uh, windshield fold down, you can water forward uh, two feet of water, even with high voltage, everything is safe, secure. And as far as capability, like I said, nothing's compromised. Mm -hmm. And then the tops, all, all the same top options. So, you know, we, we not only set out to just do it, but it had to be a no compromise electrification approach. And, you know, when you set it, when you look at the electrified marketplace, in my opinion, it, it's, it, this is the first time that, that you know, plugins are cool. Um, you're, you're not making a compromise. I, it seems for many years, you, you know, you know someone that, that, hey, I bought a hybrid and you kind of go, oh, okay, sorry. Um, what'd you get? And, you know, well, I got this. And, you know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit compromised. Um, here we set out to, to make it, it's every bit as capable. In fact, it's more capable. Every bit is fun. It's even arguably more fun. Uh, but prior to launching the, 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 the V8 392 Wrangler, this is the quickest Wrangler. It improved acceleration uh, zero to 60 in six seconds. So you've got unbelievable on-road performance, improved off-road capability um, with unbelievable fuel efficiency and the ability to drive an all electric. So it, it, it's, I said all that to say that, that we spent a number of years developing the Wrangler the way we did intentionally uh, to do exactly what you described is let's build the, the proper car that, that aligns to our customers and let them come along with us. We're not going to be able to force the marketplace. Mm -hmm. we, we just want to build what we think is best for the market and best for our customer and best for the brand, quite frankly, um, offer it in the marketplace. And I think that, that really since the, it's been in market, it's been a huge success. It really has. We have not been able to keep up with demand. Um, and every month we seemingly turn 
our inventory three, four, five times. Um, oh, wow. It is it is turning so quickly at the dealers, but it's truly providing something to customers that previously wanted that a plug-in hybrid, wanted that all electric range, or just the access to the hub lane, for example, in some states. Um, and now they can do it in a vehicle that they really want to drive. And they've got that fun factor. They've got that capability. They can take it to the beach. They can take it skiing. They can take it and do whatever they want to, just like a normal gas Wrangler. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it's interesting to your point of the six figure electric vehicle, because Jeep's, you know, the Wrangler is Jeep's halo car, and it's not the most expensive Jeep you can buy, um, which ties into kind of an interesting point about the Wagoneer, Grand Wagoneer. Uh, have you seen any severe, not severe, I guess that's the wrong word for it, but extreme interest in electrification of the higher end, the, you know, luxury quote unquote items as well or is that the buyers seem to be true and die hard for old school mentality well i i think that you know all the segments certainly the more premium segments is where you're seeing the electrification come in first right and there's a good reason for it because the cost of the technology is is well it's more than a traditional uh, ice powertrain so as that becomes more mainstream, you'll see it becoming a more mainstream, call it thirty to $50,000 products. Um, no, we, we, we have looked and, and we've been clear about our electrification strategy. And, and by 2025, the plan is that every single Jeep vehicle will have an electrified variant available in the market. So uh, what we just recently announced was that the, uh, the all new Grand Cherokee Turo uh, we just revealed it about a month ago. Uh, that's going to be our next 4 by e plug-in. So utilizing the same powertrain, essentially, that's in the Wrangler today, um, that, by the way, was voted uh, one of Ward's top 10 powertrains this year, um, we're going to put that into the Grand Cherokee in, in, in the two-row version, and we'll be launching it in the marketplace in Q1 of next year. So again, that, that similar formula is that you know, we waited till we were developing an all new vehicle rather than trying to adapt one. Um, and then we, we applied the electrification in a way that it's, again, not going to compromise the capability, the comfort and provide phenomenal, you know, fuel efficiency and improved on road performance. So essentially, it's going to give you the, the, the power and the performance of the V8 with the fuel efficiency of a four cylinder. And, and what you have pictured here is our Trailhawk variant and it quickly, you know, identifiable with those bright blue tow hooks up front, blue being the, the, the PHEV kind of signature, uh, you know, moniker you'll see on the badges. Um, but this is by far the most capable Grand Cherokee we have. Not only do you have more tractive force with the electric motors, what they provide, um, but you also now have a sway bar disconnect, increased ground clearance, air suspension, full body armor underneath and all terrain tires. So it, it's, it's about taking the Grand Cherokee to the next level, just like we did with Wrangler. It's enhancing those attributes that the customers are already drawn to and finding a way to improve on them. So the refinements, everything is still there in the Grand Cherokee, um, but it's done very efficiently. And, and it's something that our customers, we know will appreciate that part of it. And then as they kind of migrate from traditional ice to full battery electric vehicles, eventually we're all gonna be there. This is, I think, is a very good, you know, stepping stone for a lot of the people in the marketplace. Is that the only unibody vehicle on sale with the disconnectable sway bars? Ooh. I know Wrangler pioneered it. I don't mm. think there's anything unibody that you can even. No, it is. Uh, it's a it's a class exclusive for sure. Yes. Hmm. And so, and, it, and we didn't have it in the prior generation, as you know. You get a lot of extra wheel travel and articulation with that sway bar mm. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my parents have a WK2, um, okay. a Hemi, a Hemi, you know, 2014 with 230 something thousand miles on it. And, you know, where it goes from there, because that felt like such a huge step up from the early WKs and the WJs, you know, seeing the, the 4 by e and, and the Trailhawk specifically of the new Turo is, it's, you know, it's amazing. And it, bodes well for the future of the brand so yeah and again it's 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 a way for us i think to highlight where we are headed as a brand but at the same time you know stay true to our customers i mean the the, the level of of capability and the authenticity of it you know having a two-speed transfer case for example is pretty rare um do most customers need it but could they be in a situation where they <laughs> may have to have it yes 
and they expect their Jeep to get them through those situations. It's not everyone doing Moab and the Rubicon every weekend, but there's a practical application. Let's face it, the weather's been you know a little unpredictable lately, whether it's heavy snow, rain, wind, sand. Um, you know, your vehicle is, is dealing with some pretty tough, you know, conditions, even under normal circumstances. Um, Grand Cherokee, you're, you're, you're going to be, you know, our job is to get you to your destination safely and get you home. I had a quick question on, cause you mentioned the air suspension with the Grand Cherokee and the one I, I know I swapped between the Wagoneer and I think it was the Grand Cherokee L, um, mm-hmm. up in Wisconsin and the first time I was in the Wagoneer and I think I accelerated to like 25, it was like now lowering. Aerodynamic mode. Yeah. yeah. I, I just had a summit reserve for a week, a press car and it did that too. And I noticed it. And is, is there a setting that I missed to keep it high? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. Because um, the little label on the window that says your highway fuel economy is X. Um, the way you get to X is, uh, by dropping it now, granted, it's 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 about a little more than a half an inch to a three quarters of an inch, depending on right. which car it is. Uh, but yeah, it does help with aero, uh, which I think most people will appreciate that a couple couple extra mpg. Yeah, it, it the situation I was in was definitely like the one off being in the woods, <laughs> being off road, and the ability to accelerate to forty miles an hour isn't always there. Yeah, I was gonna say because what you can do is if you slow down below 15, you can take it up to off road one, which is another notch below your normal ride height without having to put it in four low or rock mode, which then you can get to quadra lift two, which gives you your maximum ground clearance. And that's where you get that really big gap between the wheel and the body. And it's like, this thing truly looks lifted compared to what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I have to climb up into it. You're yeah, also you're right. not no, yeah. tall. If you park I'm also it, not yeah. tall. Yeah. <laughs> if you park it and, and lift it all the way, I mean, yeah, neither am I. Um, I yeah, you you're you're climbing in it. It's like getting in a Wrangler. <laughs> that was good. All right. Sorry to derail, Ross. <laughs> no, no, you're you're good. You're good. So there's there's a um, you know, a lot of places that we can really go here. Uh curiosity what's in your personal fleet is uh we're, we're wondering if if your garage is exclusively jeep or he said car they, guy so i'm hoping car guy. Hmm. <laughs> okay so um at the moment i have uh, i have two jeeps i have a wrangler okay uh it's a happens to be a 392 um pretty fun car uh, my 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 daily is uh it's a it's a two-row grand cherokee so yep. that's just my my normal uh everyday car and then in the the summer because i am in michigan you do get you know a very small window where you can drive something really fun um hellcat wide body six speed nice. <laughs> the right transmission too oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. it's got to be a manual was there any discussion of putting the manual in the 392 Wrangler or, or could it just not fit? <laughs> I was the first one that's going to buy one. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I might have put my name out there as putting a deposit down if they built it. But, that you know, it's, it's, it's funny thing with manuals that, that it is so, so many people do not know how to drive a manual anymore. It's become so irrelevant in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. I think it says a lot about me. Um, that's another <laughs> key thing I've learned over the years is do not let your personal preferences influence your, your, your decision making um, either. Um, but yeah, the reality is that the vast majority of customers just are not interested in shifting gears anymore um, like me. But I, every car personally I've ever owned um, has been a stick shift. I still love shifting gears. Doesn't bother me daily driving, long commutes, whatever. I've, I've driven stick shifts always. So I enjoy it. We, we There is a very small uh, you know community of Wrangler owners that are diehard uh, manual owners, but uh, no, no, no plans at the moment for the 392 with a, with a stick, three pedals. <laughs> that would just be dangerous. It, I, I mean, personally, the time I had in it, like, I, I don't really have time to think about shifting. Like, it's quick right. enough, like, as a Jeep, like, didn't really want to yeah, shift. They're measuring what, like, high fours, low fives on zero to 60 for that? You, yeah, you don't. Oh, you, you can get low fours all day. with, with Low good fours? Low fours. <laughs> low fours. All day. Oh, boy. Easy. The, the, the four and a half is, uh, is a pretty conservative number. Oh I probably gosh. don't have to tell you this, but you could, uh, on the right surface, you could easily out accelerate your own Hellcat with that thing. 
Oh, whole shot all day. There, there's nothing that's going to touch it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's it, it can embarrass a lot of cars that don't necessarily expect it, which uh, it kind of makes you smile a little bit. Um, but that is that car is the epitome of fun. I mean, that is the the ultimate poster child of everything that that just is Jeep and is Wrangler. I mean, there's something about getting in a Wrangler that people just smile more when they get in it, right? I mean, it's just it, there's a you can't really put your finger on it, but. I mean, I personally feel like the world would just be a better place if everyone just drove, drove a Wrangler. Um, I mean, people more just smile more. They're happier. And and then, you know, you throw a 392 into it with that acceleration and oh, the man. noise it makes. And it is, it's a pretty special product. And and it's, it is just, it, 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 it's right. The acceleration is absolutely mind blowing. The noise, the capability. I mean, it, it's just, it's off the charts in every category. Is it a limited run? Is is there a, a certain number that are going to be built or is it however many orders get placed by dealers and customers that build them until they can't? No, there, there, we, we do have a limit on, on our annual volume with nothing that we've, we've talked about publicly, but we do mm -hmm. limit the, the amounts um, that we will build each year. And we haven't necessarily announced the end of production yet. Um, but clearly again, is, is the marketplace uh, will, you know, ultimately shift to electrification. It won't be around forever. Right. Right. The, I mean, to tie in the crazy acceleration, I, I think people are going to be shocked and pleasantly surprised by the offline acceleration by the hybrid units. Um, you know, in electric mode, the four by E's are not slow. And, you know, it, it'll probably surprise some people. So I, I don't know. I, I really like um, V8 power, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I oh, This is the vehicle I own right now is my sixth v8 but you know off-roading the electric torque down low is kind of unbeatable so oh yeah and that's where you get that tractive force as you know off-roading it's, it's all about you know not spinning the tires right you just need mm -hmm. grip and the the what helps it is having that that extra torque with basically off idle right you the chances of you spinning the tire are much less than you are with a gas engine that you've got to get up to 2500 2800 before you start moving or spinning a tire and here you're going to be doing you know move the car's going to start actually moving at 1500 rpms or 1700 rpms so the tractive force and you're right i think that you know when i first drove a, a four by e wrangler it was a long long time ago but that was i i didn't know what the i knew what our target acceleration was but i was absolutely shocked at what it felt like to actually drive the car i was like this is this is really pretty special mm -hmm. and that was a, a really early uh you know version of it but um yeah I, you're you're absolutely right i mean the fun the drive factor is there for the pf and four by eight the uh the fun anecdote from the rally in the fall was coming off the off-road course the uh, Sahara 4xE was just waiting because one of the Jeep Jamboree guys didn't know it was behind him. So they actually had to honk the horn <laughs> to be able to exit the course for the next guy to go in because nobody, he didn't know it was there. It was just sitting there calm and quiet. It, and, you know, that's a pretty special experience for the people that, that like to, to off-road or just go camping, you know, to, to get to nature and then, you know, flip it into pure electric mode. That's a really cool experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was truly nothing like it. And and yeah, to your point, it's every bit as capable. In fact, the, the Wrangler 4 by it has been down the Rubicon in full electric mode, zero gas power. The length of the trail? Yes. Yes. Did the I entire don't know trail. I knew that. That's actually pretty yes. amazing. And we did charge it overnight, of course. But uh, right. yes, but we de never okay, used the right. gas engine to traverse any of the obstacles, 100% electric oh, wow. mode. Well, and isn't that... Uh, Nina Barlow, who just won the Rebel Rally, did it in a Sahara 4 by E. Like absolutely, yeah. yeah. You're absolutely <laughs> right. You know, Nina's uh she she's a pretty pretty handy driver, but uh, you know, that, again, I, I think you know, you need a pretty awesome piece of machinery. There's some stiff competition this year, you know, a lot of new entries, some new EVs that came out, some new other products, and and yet, you know, a tried and true, a Wrangler 4 by E plug-in hybrid. Um, you know, takes the trophy. So I think, again, just another testament that it, it's, it's truly a no compromise car. Um, and, and that's what we set out to do. Like I said, we probably could have made a Wrangler plug in a few years ago. Um, it wouldn't have been a good Wrangler. So, so okay. So be, because we've spent so much time talking about electric cars and, you know, the EVs in the Jeep brand, just out of curiosity, what percentage of the time do you spend in your job as, you know, as 
brand product marketing manager here, do you actually devote to electric vehicles? Because in the media, in the news, it seems like it's 95% of, of what we see and read. So is it, you know, still is the focus really all there? Yeah, no, I think it is. And I think that, that it, 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 we're all doing the same thing. It, it's finding the right electrification application for each of the segments and the vehicles that you compete with that's going to have the most compelling product offering. And for us, again, there are some, some real true brand pillars that we cannot compromise and, and, and we're not going to. So we, we have to, uh, authenticity is one of them. Um, the open air freedom. I mean, there's a, just a number of things that we're not going to compromise within the products. Um, but yeah, I'd say a lot of it spent on on that is spent on understanding the customer and 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 how they will evolve as the marketplace does. Um, and I think that that one of the good not good things one of the I mean it's clear that consumers there's a there's a huge education process that needs to happen. This is a tough transition from a consumers, and it's funny because you know, just visiting with friends and family last week and, and you talk about the plug-in, they immediately just gloss over it. They have no idea what, what I'm talking about. You just say hybrid mm-hmm. and they go, yeah, I have, yeah, I know someone that has one. I know what it is. And you say, right. well, this is a plug-in. It's not this and blah, 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 blah. And they immediately they just clueless. So, you know, it's clear that the, the, the understanding that the customer is, is step one, the Jeep customer, then understanding existing customers about what they like and don't like. But um, I would say to tell you that it, it's requiring a tremendous amount of time. I mean, I'm looking at the entire showroom. And again, we are going to electrify the, the entire lineup uh, throughout the Jeep brand. Um, different applications, of course, in different timing. But um, it's a big part of, of what I'm doing now. Yeah. Okay. That was interesting. I, I think I saw a report today that said Gladiator 4x E's 2024. So even that's coming. That's a great application I, for it. Don't think that was an announcement that we okay. made today. <laughs> no. Maybe that was the gotcha I was talking about earlier. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, that was a great try. <laughs> but see, I get to see all the press releases too. Exactly. You know, Somebody I heard something in an email. I, I read something about five thousand dollar Gladiator three ninety two. Really? You heard about oh, that, right? No. It's a million of them. Um, so something that I, I did want to touch on just to round out the electric stuff. Uh, when the 4 by e lineup was unveiled, leading with the Wrangler, there was a discussion about putting chargers on the trails out in places like Moab and, you know, Colorado and other places in Utah. Is that something that Jeep is still working towards? Oh, 100%. Uh, in fact, awesome. um at the end of this year, we'll have over a dozen up and we'll be probably north of 30 next year. Absolutely. Oh, wow. So, wow. yeah, no. So how cool is it going to be? I mean, because when you get to the trailhead, I mean, yep. You, I mean, you can save the battery because you have different drive modes. You can have a battery save and you're just on full gas. So when you get to the trailhead, all right, fine. I can go in electric then. But some of the more popular ones, yeah, no, we just install chargers there. You, you park the car, you're airing out tires, you're getting the, the rig set up, right? You're waiting for people. Go ahead and top off the, the, the battery while you're at it. Um, they're completely solar powered. You 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 start it with an app on your phone or 4 by e app. So it's exclusive to Jeep owners, but gives them that ability to go, hey, look at this. I've now got 21 miles of all electric range that I can go off-roading in. So okay. fully solar powered, uh, independent, and, uh, you know, activate it with your app and exclusive four by E owners. That is, that's absolutely amazing. I don't think I realized it was that prolific, you know, it, at first it sounded like there'd be one or two here or there, but 30 is a big number. Oh that's yeah. No, all of, of our badge of honor. Ultimately we want to get the, you know, all of our badge of honor trails. I'm not sure if, if you're familiar mm-hmm. with the badge of honor program, but Very. we, we we're well over the, you know, 50 plus trails now there, but, you know, the goal is to, you know, really establish, uh, and those are all generated, by the way, from, from users and, and people that vote online and, and social media. Um, and those are the same trails that we're targeting uh, now to, to, with the mm-hmm. installation of these, these chargers that you have pictured here. So, um, you know, this, they will look a little bit different for the setting. They will fit yep. in for whatever mm-hmm. the natural environment is a little bit more. Um, but, you know, otherwise give the, the Jeep owners the ability to top off the battery right there at the trailhead. You should do blue badge of honor emblems for people who <laughs> run it in fully electric. <laughs> That's a great idea. Thank you. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, Done. I just want you to know that forever now, Ross is going to say that was my idea. <laughs> I mean, I would give him 100% credit. For that <laughs> hey, if it happens, I'm, I'm happy to let you do it. And that point it out every time my wife doesn't want to see another one. <laughs> <laughs> so... Oh, sorry, Scott. I had a quick no. technical question on the so on the solar chargers. Like, is there is there a battery backup built into them? So if it is a cloudy oh. day, can you still charge off it? Yeah, absolutely. Because okay. you're going to deplete the battery inside of the charger faster than you're going to. You know, as you're charging a vehicle, it's going to deplete faster than you can. The sun can replenish the battery. So yeah, no, it has the ability. I forgot the exact number. I think there's a range, but it can charge up to six vehicles before um, it's fully depleted. Okay. Cool. That was, yeah. <laughs> I so, would just see solar panels and think that's not good enough. But <laughs> battery backups make it good enough. Oh yeah, yeah, it's got big batteries inside of it. It's good. I would be curious to see. I mean, some automakers have explored the integration of solar panels into their roof. What? Who? That was Nissan that did that with the Leaf. That Prius you know? had it to run a fan or something yeah. on the inside. Yeah. Like keep your Prius Back cool or something yeah. like that. But it, it'll be interesting you know, to see that kind of stuff, especially as like the overlanding community further in, integrates them into their vehicles so mm -hmm. they can run their fridge, you know, and like their beer cooler. <laughs> but yeah, yep. very interesting. So in terms of, uh, in I, I know you can't speak much about future product. Uh, <laughs> the JL has been a revolution and a, you know, a unbelievable success for Jeep. Is there a refresh coming or is it kind of just evolution of things adding to, you know, the product, like with the extreme recon package and fine tuning it until its replacement arrives? Yeah, I think, I, I, I think this year's probably a pretty good example of, you know, some of the product actions. I mean, we launched the four by E we had a, the three ninety two. You just mentioned the, the, the recon extreme 35 inch mm -hmm. tire package. Um, yeah. There's a number of, of, of product enhancements that are always in the works and planned for the, for the future. It's a, you know, even the prior generation, the JK, it was a product that we were always touching, mm -hmm. always, always playing with tinkering, enhancing over the life cycle. So yeah, you could absolutely expect the same with the JL. Okay. How elephant in the corner, how has Bronco changed outlook on the JL and the Wrangler brand? Um, I can't say it has necessarily changed our outlook because the, the, the Wrangler formula is the Wrangler formula. We, mm -hmm. we, we invented the, the, the four by four, <laughs> I mean, literally. So, and, and that formula has been in place since 1941. So that's where it began. And, and for us today, I, I, all I can say is that, you know, out of the last three quarters, we've set sales records for Wrangler the last three quarters in a row. We and, it. <laughs> it, 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 and if nothing else, I, I, I think it's it's certainly growing the segment, um, but uh, it seems to be helping Wrangler sales. I don't know. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's good, I think, to have competition. Um, look forward to it. But, uh, you know, we're going to stay focused on, you know, again, what's true to Wrangler and what Wrangler is in the marketplace, what it represents what our customers want to see from us next. Um, that that's our, that's our beacon and it always will be. Okay. That's yeah. I mean, competition is never a bad thing. And mm -mm. if it, you know, pushes things to the future, then that's great it, for everybody. Yeah. I think it, it, it absolutely keeps us on our toes. Um, and I think that, yeah, I mean, of course we were paying attention, um, but again, we, we stayed the course. We, we have a, a pretty aggressive plan already for Wrangler always has been, um, and just, you know, make sure that we were prioritizing the right, uh, product, uh, actions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chris, where do you want to go next? I, I have a list of questions that I, but I feel I, like I'm, <laughs> I'm stealing it here. <laughs> Dude, homie, we've been through 98 episodes of this show. You keep driving. Uh, I'll keep. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So <laughs> in terms of the Jeep brands expansion, over the last decade or so. Uh, if you look back to say 2005, it was pretty narrowly focused between its smaller you know, SUVs, which really weren't that small at the time, and then branching out to the top end with the commander. Um, yeah. The last decades really brought, you know, from the Renegade up to the Grand Wagoneer, a pretty massive, 
change in what the company offers and also just what kind of vehicle, you know, you can get with the same logo on it. And, and like you said, trying to stay true to those same pillars. So what goes into, you know, balancing the two total different ends of the spectrum there with something like Renegade on the smaller fuel efficient city runabout kind of end with some capability and then the, you know, ultra luxury three row top tier vehicle. Yeah, interesting enough, they, 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 in a way, they serve a similar purpose. Um, you know, the, the, the Renegade, the, the, the current generation Compass, and even the Cherokee, they have been a, a big feeder for the brand. When those customers come back to market, whether or not they, they are loyal to that nameplate, some of them are, but the reality is over half of them are loyal to the brand. Um, and if you look at a Renegade and I look at Jeep.com, guess what the number one vehicle they're cross shopping on Jeep is? A Wrangler. Why? It, it's in that same kind of DNA and design. Um, you look at a Compass. What's the number one vehicle they're cross shopping? It's a Grand Cherokee because, again, in that same DNA and design. And when they come out of those vehicles, when they finally grow into their next, you know, move up in their, their Jeep, you know, family, they're buying in those vehicles. So those, those entry-level products give us the opportunity to introduce people to the Jeep brand before you know, they're in a position in their life where they could maybe afford a, a Wrangler or a Grand Cherokee. Now they can get a sampling of what you know, capability at a different price point is. And I think the Renegade is a great example for me uh, because it's really a, you know, something different for that segment. Of, you know, that segment, small or compact you know, UVs, the majority of them, reality is they're front wheel drive. Um, you know, over 80% 80, 80 of our, our Renegades are, are four by four. Um, mm -hmm. We have a Trailhawk version with skid plates on it and a lift. And, you know, that's, it's somewhat unheard of, but if you go to YouTube or, or look up clubs or forums, these are rabid enthusiasts, just like Wranglers, maybe not as prolific, but they're, they're every bit as, as, as passionate about the product as, as Wrangler owners are. So, mm -hmm. you know, as they move into the brand, they grow with the brand and as their family and lifestyle changes they they have a different product offering for them. Now, similarly, I say Wagoneer, we look at the Grand Cherokee, which has truly been the flagship of the, the Jeep mm -hmm. brand for the last 30 years. And, and what we saw is while today, you know, prior to the launch of it, we compete pretty much to your point, you know, broadly across all the mainstream SUV segments where we didn't compete was in the large or full size, the, the, the large segment, or in the premium. And, you know, if I look at, you know, some of those top nameplates that have been in the marketplace, their number one inflow competitive nameplate, unfortunately, was a Grand Cherokee. And it has been. So when when our Jeep owners, you know, their lifestyle changes um, and they need more space, utility, capability, towing, hauling, whether it's people or cargo, um, they had to go to another brand. So hence the Wagoneer. The Grand Wagoneer is, is exactly represents what the Grand Wagoneer did back in 1984. Um, and I was lucky enough to have one as a kid. Um, I did. I actually passed my driving test in it um, in awesome. a Grand Wagoneer. <laughs> um, but we had an 85 blue with the wood paneling, did all kinds of crazy things in it. My dad still doesn't even know to this day. Um, and never, I mean, just beat it. But it was, you know, and, and that was a, a luxury vehicle back in the day. And, and today, that's what the Grand Wagoneer is. So they serve a different purpose. One, filling a, a part of the marketplace that we, quite frankly, weren't competing in. Uh, two, is a retention tool. And, and three, really to grow the brand. If you look for that white space opportunity, um, those were the obvious spaces that we would go in and, and, and prioritize next. Is, and, this, and this is coming from a father of four. Is there potential for an extended Wagoneer? <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty big <laughs> they're pretty big but i need that extra cubic foot that's why i'm in a suburban like i i'm yeah. stuck i'm literally no, it's, it's, yeah it's it's it, you know that's a big part of that segment too and you know we'll, we haven't uh, announced any any other product plans and don't plan to here today but uh um, <laughs> you know i think you know Stay tuned. There's 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 a number of product plans planned for 22 calendar year. You know, 21 I mentioned was a was a record year for for announcements for the Jeep brand. But um, there's not much slowdown coming next calendar year either. Um, you know, we've been busy the last few years, and no, I think 22 is going to be a pretty impressive year again. So, the, so the, what I hold on, Ross. What I read there is anything we didn't hear about in 21, we will hear about in 22. <laughs> for, 
pretty much more more of a square Cherokee someday. That was one of my questions. <laughs> What's the have you? Are people still <laughs> clamoring for an XJ for a body on frame like? You That's know, so funny. Enclosed. I never missed this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I see that. Uh, track hawk's coming up too now. Um, uh-huh. I, you know, as much as I would love to, uh, these are all great. Um, it's so much fun to talk about future products. Um, <laughs> Oh, um, you know what? Say. There's a lot of news that's on the docket. It's okay. uh, it's gonna come out really soon. So stay tuned. Is all I can tell you. It's that's, gonna be a okay. fun year. That's good that's news great. for us. It's stuff to talk about. We got we got a yeah. weekly show, <laughs> and you know, obviously Perfect. fans of the brand, so it doesn't really yeah. hurt our own interest either. So speaking of own interests, uh, we're both off roaders. Obviously, yeah. do you? what kind of feedback do you get from the community? And is there any actual information as to what percentage of owners actually end up going off pavement with these? (laughs) So, you know, a couple of times a year, we have specific events, Moab or Easter Jeep Safari is one where, you know, you go with the most rabid Jeep enthusiast and we send our whole team out there, product planning, the brand team, marketing, everyone goes out. Mm -hmm. And they're all doing different trail runs with different groups and clubs and not. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, you make a lot of really good friends that week. It's a fun week. And when you're looking at these Jeeps and and people start out with a brand new JL and they put 50 grand in it and, you know, you ask them what they did and why. And then they open the back and they, you know, configured a, a new system to attach things to here or this. Yeah. A lot of those ideas and inspiration, um, comes from, from owners, uh, the, the other place that's a, a phenomenal source is, is obviously social media. Jeep has the largest social media following of any other mainstream automotive brand on the planet, period. And as, as you can imagine, it's, it's, it's great to see those conversations. Um, and, and, and you can extract a lot of very good and insightful information. And especially you can imagine the, our Wrangler owners, um, they're very vocal and they're very passionate. Um, so it's, it's clear what, the, what their desires and wants are. And I think, you know, the 392, the, the 35 Extreme Recon, those are great examples of very much directly consumer request. Have you seen similar was, I guess the question is really, was, was Trailhawk a response to consumer requests as well? You know, given the Trailhawk, response? So Trailhawk is, a, is, to your point, it's so Renegade, I mentioned before, we have a Trailhawk variant of a Renegade. We have a Trailhawk variant of a Compass. Those two vehicles have a trail rated badge on the side of them. Mm -hmm. The regular Renegade, the regular Compass do not have a trail rated badge. Me as the product guy, as the brand guy, I do not own whether or not a vehicle, a Jeep gets trail rated or not. Engineering does. So Mm -hmm. they have a a very strict set of criteria that unless I can come up with a product plan that can accomplish these functional attributes and find a way to pay for it and customers can afford it, they won't put a badge on the car. So that was our way of putting the stake at the ground and saying, listen, Jeep is about capability first and foremost. And in every single segment in which we're going to compete, we're going to have the most capable offering uh, in that particular segment. And that's what exactly what the Trailhawk represents. So yeah, visually you, you get the different aesthetics, you get the hood decal, which is a, actually functional because it's low gloss, low glare. Uh, you get the functional tow hooks where it, over one point five times a GBW, um, it can hold. So very functional, but visual differentiation to help highlight the capability part of Jeep. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's a great time to be on that side of things, just based on what we see in terms of rising demand and rising interest in the off-road world. You know, even just from our little side of things, it it seems like over even the last 24 months, the interest in in off-roading and even just the vehicles themselves has really taken off. Um, probably not far from what a couple of years from a, st- a factory Wrangler on 37s, you know. <laughs> which when I was a kid, 37s were like I don't even know anybody like, that had 30. Yeah, no, they were like mythical at that. You know, I mean, it was like yeah, <laughs> 35s were almost. I mean, not too long ago, we were going. That's just like crazy land, right? I mean, but no, you're you're right. It's 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 pushing that envelope and, and it's building on what is. The, what are the attributes that those customers love? And, you know, you talk about off-roading, it's, it's interesting you ask about it. And, you know, it varies by, by model, of course, um, you know, but we say that, that, that while 100% of our Jeep owners, they, they take their, their Jeep off-road. 
reality is that 95% of them just do it in their mind. And I think everyone does that. It doesn't matter if it's a, if it's even an automobile, it could be any product that you buy. It could be a Cuisinart for Pete's sake. I mean, you envision, uh, you know, this fancy casserole, maybe you're going to make for, for Thanksgiving, but I don't know. I'm not going to probably ever accomplish that. Um, and I may not go do the Rubicon in my Wrangler, but I know that, you know what, if I was ever in a situation where I had to get through something that was really tough or rugged, or one weekend we had a chance to go off-roading, I can do it in my Jeep. So oh, we know that, that for a fact that there are a, a, a core population of Jeep owners that absolutely take them off, Wrangler being the highest uh, you know, percentage. But even the Trailhawk owners uh, are the highest percentage. Most of the Trailhawk owners, and they define it, and we ask them, how, you know, do you take your, your vehicle off-road? Uh, at least once a month, um, it's it's double digits. So the Trailhawk owners do buy it for a reason. Uh, they want that extra capability. And of course, Wrangler owners tend to use theirs off-road um, much more than any other Jeep owners. You know, you mentioning the idea of doing something versus the actuality reminded me of a Jeep commercial. And for the life of me, I could not tell you when it was from, but it was, I think, a TJ Rubicon driving down the road like through a thunderstorm or a hurricane or something and a tree fell and the driver just went over the tree while everybody else was stopped and you know <laughs> that kind of mentality is you know it, it's the better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it kind of thing and well it, it is and, and, and it's a reality and you know i think about okay well maybe someone doesn't need that capability but let's go back to the more family-friendly vehicles the the wl the new grand cherokee the new grand wagoneer well you know that's a family car but there's probably people that are going to take it skiing this winter right hey we've got this new jeep let's go skiing and let's say it snows 10 inches at night which happens quite often when you go skiing guess what you're not gonna have to do the next day is get a shovel because you have more than 10 inches of ground clearance in both those vehicles because that air suspension. So yeah, that's that's the other part of it is that, okay, I've got extra ground clearance because I'm in a Jeep and I've got air suspension, 10 inches of snow, I'm just gonna raise the car up and put it in four low and drive through this and not spend three hours digging my car out. That's a fair point. Uh, I'm not a skier, so. <laughs> 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 Wouldn't be able to attest to that, but that, yeah, that's a, that is, a very fair point. Um, I, I was searching so hard trying to find that commercial and I can't come up with it. Yeah, I, you <laughs> I'm know, looking later too. I, I thought I found the end of YouTube, but apparently I haven't. So I'm, not, I'm not finding that commercial either. I'm going to look probably, later. Probably from like 2004, maybe. I'm <sighs> confident it was TJ, but. That's really where mm. it starts and ends. But it's it's of the yeah. genre that when you go looking for video of that time period, you're like, why is this so grainy? And it was <laughs> right. just yeah, it was normal. <laughs> it was what we were used to. Somebody pulled it off a VHS recording to upload it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so I don't know. I I, I think um, in terms of things, I'm most excited for to drive in. You know, having owned a Wrangler, grown up with Jeeps, and literally last Monday had that, that capped off a week I spent with the Grand Cherokee L Summit Reserve with the Hemi. Um, in light of all of that, the most exciting for me is probably the 4 by e Trailhawk, the two-row Grand Cherokee, mm. just because it kind of encompasses like everything that the brand has done and been striving for. So um, I, I see that as being a success and I'm very much looking forward to spending some time with it. Uh, that's that's really really cool you say that and I can't wait to get you behind the wheel and and off road too I mean it's it's not it's not you know on road it's great you've driven the Grand Cherokee L you know the refinement the steering dynamics are phenomenal but you know we when we did the reveal we uh, uh, we we actually took it up lines back in Moab which is a, an obstacle that's been closed for a number of years now but it's just because it's so dangerous but it's a it's a sixty five degree incline. Um, and we drove right up it in electric mode. So just to do that and experience that, to your point, it, it, it absolutely is going to operate and behave just like a Jeep you would expect it to do and do things that you go, oh, it's going to hurt the car and it doesn't. But to do it all electric mode, uh, it, there, there's a cool factor there that this, yeah, that's just unmatched currently in the marketplace, I think, today. What are you excited for? I know, again, don't <laughs> and can't allude too much to future product, but what what is on your radar that you're you're, you know, 
looking forward to? Well, I think electrification as a whole, uh, you know, I think about it. And then again, for, for so long, it was done as more of a, 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 it feels like a check the box type thing from, for a lot of different brands and, and product offerings. Um, for me, it's exciting because we can make a better Jeep with electrification. We truly can. And we've got to do it right. But the performance that you can get out of it from a capability standpoint is is just nuts. Um, the on-road performance of it is is pretty cool, right? I mean, again, how you apply that electrification depends on what level of performance and how you, you want a, the vehicle to, to operate. And then you get this efficiency part of it that, you know, it's going to be just much more relevant as we go forward and the redu reduction of CO2. So for me, electrification and the different applications of it on the different Jeeps. I think that that is going to be really exciting because I think the Wrangler and the Grand Cherokee are, are demonstrate our approach to electrification and to do it in a way that's not going to compromise the vehicle, but actually make it more fun, more pleasurable, just a better Jeep in general. Um, that's been our approach and that's the, the path we're heading down. And I think it's, it's, it's pretty darn exciting for me and then coming from someone that's, you know, more traditional, um, in, in terms of cars, again, I've, I've like, I love cars. I have since I was a little kid. Yeah, um, okay. we could put, yeah, I mean, we could put loud <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and build those forever. I would, but that's not the future. That's not the customer. That's not the marketplace. That's not our responsibility to, to this planet, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. And us as a brand, I think we have that responsibility. So we got to do it in a way that's going to stay true to the brand and, and retain our customers and not bring in just new customers. Cause we think that we absolutely are attracting new customers with the Wrangler 4IE. We know that for a fact. But at the same time, we can't abandon our core. So um, the application is going to be a lot of fun for us and Jeep. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. Yeah, it, it's a lot of good on the horizon. Absolutely. Sorry, I've been searching so much for Lions back photos. <laughs> Man, oh, there you go. <laughs> that so is that so was, sketchy. That's 75th anniversary right there. Yeah, which that's is, what I was. <laughs> there might, I'm not sure if there, if you do W. L reveal lions back that might be the one um for a uh an image of that one really because the that just to get in and out of the 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 the, the trail it's yes yeah, 65 degrees which you know in a car looks like you're it feels like you're vertical nothing on camera or video ever translates properly how steep something is in person it's really scary yeah yeah i mean <laughs> i've done I, a lot of things I haven't been out there yet, but I've heard that the grip on the rocks there is is pretty spectacular. But even so, like one second of wheel spin and, and heart's probably racing. It, it, yeah, because the, the obstacles are very, very, very extreme. But that is a, a bucket list. I mean, I think it's a highlight for all of us every year to go to Easter Jeep and, and mm -hmm. go run some trails and go hang out with a bunch of just super cool Jeepers that are crazy passionate about their cars and see what they do and how much they love with them just to hang out with those people for a week and actually get to run some trails and, you know, Hey, let's, we throw in new parts and we try and break them while we're out there too. Um, we're there to, to, to get stuff done and test things. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of fun. It really is. Which of all of the Easter Jeep Safari concepts was your favorite? Ooh, wow. Um, you know what? I, I, I'm going to have to go with one of the overlanding, um, either far out or way out. Um, honestly, I think I could just live in that thing. I, I, you really could. It's got a kitchen. It's got a tent, a bed. I mean, it, it, it's a car to begin with. Um, both of them, just to describe everyone, it's, a, it's an overlanding. It's a Jeep Gladiator pickup truck that's been converted to overlanding. And when I say it's been fully decked out with all the gear, um, I mean, you've got canopies on the side that fold out. We've got chairs. That the top piece there is a fold over pop up tent that's huge. You could sleep six people in there. The whole back of it, you've got benches. We've got a little fireplace back there. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a full condo on wheels. I mean, I, just nice. be done. It's like the apocalypse uh, machine right there. Just go off the grid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if it's that, an eco diesel, one. it could go even farther. It, and it was a diesel. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't yeah. realize that. Huh. That's interesting. I got it with the top open. Let's see. I'm yeah, typing so fast my mouse isn't keeping up. <laughs> You're doing great. Oh, that's a huge tent. 
Oh yeah, it, it, it wraps all the way around too. So I mean, when we set it all the way up, it's funny. I just did this about two months ago for for someone at a at an event, and uh, I had to set it up myself. And it's been a couple of years, and me and one other guy did it, and I was like, "This thing's not that hard." And we were debating on like, "Yeah, who's going to take it for the weekend?" Um, <laughs> it's yeah, it's super cool. The tent's huge, and you got this giant canopy that comes all the way around it. Yeah, you're. This is a that's a that is a that's an awesome machine. Super fun. The, uh, the tent from this angle, and it's probably totally perspective, but it looks just about as big as the Gladiator itself. Yeah, it just about is. It what almost color is, is inside of it. That's a great color. That's not one of the colors available now, right? No, it's not. We, we always do custom colors for, for the, the, the Moab concepts. It's funny, it was, I was just looking at Moab concepts earlier today. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're full steam ahead for Easter yeah, Jeep yeah, Safari 22? Yeah. Speaking yeah. of teasing things, <laughs> yeah. Hey, let's just say it's going to be another really fun year. If you look at the twenty-one concepts and then, um, you know, take it another level further, it's uh, it's going to be a really cool year. Dude, the yeah, twenty-one concepts were great. They're always great. When when have they not been great? <laughs> Although, I still go back to that that mighty FC, the yes. Ford Control. Yeah. yeah. That's my answer to anything when they're like, hey, do you want this? Yes, that's the only thing I want in life is the Ford Control concept. Man, that thing was so cool. Terrifying. That thing was awesome. I just need you guys to do one that's like a van now, too. A van? Yeah, like <laughs> that thing. drop a Pacifica onto the back of the cab so I still have a bunch of seats oh. for kids, and I'll just roll in that forever. Chris, we it would look like, like, yeah, we could put like four rows of seating in there. Yeah. Too. It would look like that canoe that, you know, that. It's exactly the canoe. Yes. canoe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Twice the size, but yeah, with 40s on it. <laughs> Those are 40s? Oh, yeah. my God. I would you guys were talking tire sides there. earlier. I was like, 37s are going to be like the new 44s. Like, that's going to be like the yeah. next Dude, iteration. <laughs> it's wild. I got to set a 285 sitting in the garage that got to go on on the truck. And like, they look huge when they're just stacked, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, man. What's the, oh God. I want to. Uh, I'm going to my tire photo real fast to see if I can find it. Okay. Because it's what's currently in my garage. <laughs> you know what's a fun game is always kind of going through the internet and seeing what the biggest size you can fit on a certain vehicle is. So yeah. there was there was one point when I was looking at buying a Renegade and I was like, I wonder if you can fit 275s on a Renegade. You know. <laughs> and then my dad put like 265s on his Grand Cherokee and was like. If we can fit 285s, <laughs> slippery slope. So, yes, it I, is. I bought four wheels that came with old tires, and then I got my new tire. So, I have this stack of eight, it's just sitting in the garage right now, Almost waiting can't clear to go out on. Your door there. I can clear. Wow, I can clear. Oh, that's actually there's a I have a loft in the garage, Ross. Move to the Midwest, you can do fun oh, stuff. There's... Yeah, there's a loft. Yeah. It's, it's powered by an electric winch. I have a winch in my garage, and I don't have one in my vehicle. <laughs> Well, you that makes it. sense. But yeah, you need one in the garage too. But yeah, you also need it, one in the Jeep. Pull it off the garage. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. The, <laughs> the winch is where all of my uh, backyard lawn furniture cushions live during the winter. <laughs> <laughs> I did that last weekend. Um, right. Hey, Scott, have you had any uh, any demand for a factory winch on, on the Jeeps? Because I know that the Power Wagon has one. And as far as I can think, that's the only factory winch. Tremor. I think it is the only factory winch that's uh, currently Tremor. available in the marketplace. Um, interesting idea. You know, a lot of our customers, winches are, are something that are very, not I wouldn't say consumer specific, but, um, you know, the type of rope, how much you, you know, it, it, there's a lot of variability. And I think consumers tend to be very specific about what mm -hmm. they're, I want this winch. This is the winch for me. Uh, Jeep owners tend to be very in individualistic anyway. So it, it would be a maybe a little presumptuous of us to say, here's the winch for the Jeep owners. Right. But, yeah, you know, that's... it's not a bad idea. You'd yeah. have to offer it with your uh, steel or synthetic. Like it would be. Yeah, I there you go. Yeah. On that. I literally wrote an article on that this week. And it's the options are endless, you know. They, they really are. And I think that even when you talk to a lot of owners and ask them, why do you run that winch, right? They give you a really good reason for them. So yeah, that's uh mm -hmm. power wagons a little bit different because it's such a beast anyway, that I'm not sure there's a lot of power wagons out there with, you know, other winches in them. It's just, 
it's a beast of a truck with a beast of a winch in it. 30, 37s on that thing too, without a lift, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, to your point, I mean, options are, it seems like what's kind of been Jeep's, you know, like party trick for the last little while. You could walk into a dealer and and sitting next to a Trailhawk was a, was a Trackhawk, which are <laughs> polar opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, it, yeah, it's wild. It, it, it is. And Grand Cherokee has, has been, it, it, it's almost a franchise within itself. You're right. It, it, and, and the loyalty of our Grand Cherokee owners is, is like nothing else. And it's been, and it speaks to the, how expansive the lineup is. And it, you know, it spans from, you know, say the high thirties to, you know, 70 plus thousand dollars to your point, the prior generation was, yeah, 30 to a hundred thousand. Um, and with a make model trim level for pretty much everyone. Um, and you know, if you bought an entry level model, you probably came back and got a limited, you bought a, a premium model. Maybe you got one with a B8 the next time or the dual pane, or you went to the track hawk, or you went to the summit reserve. There's so many different options just within the grand Cherokee, but what we couldn't stand to watch anymore is how many of them left after their second or third one, because they needed something bigger. They needed more yeah. and hence the, the grand Cherokee three row and the Wagoneer. So really attacking that three row space. My, my favorite part of the of the L is like it's legitimately longer. You guys just didn't shove a third row in the back like Forerunners and and uh, what it's else is small? Like even Explorer, like yeah, uh, it's an actual third row. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, but no, no more of the times you're just kind of bolting a bench to the, the 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 floor in the back. I mean, one of our engineers, he was the test case for it, the Mario test. He's six four. Pretty big dude. And, and oh Mario God. had to get in the back of the, the third row and his head couldn't touch. Mario had to get back oh, there and man. be comfortable. So that was the Mario test. So if Mario could get back there and his head's not touching the ceiling and his arm was on the armrest and he was comfortable, we knew we were on the right track. No, but to Chris's point. Mario's that, my favorite guy, by the way. Because yeah. <laughs> that's uh, my height. So, <laughs> oh, man, I, I can fit in just about anything. So that's not a problem I have. But, but to Chris's point, I mean, my family is the perfect model for this. In 1998 or so, after two XJs and two ZJs, uh, they, my dad got a Tahoe or a Yukon because you needed more space. Mm -hmm. And came totally full circle in, you know, in 2013 and got another Grand Cherokee once, once I was out of the house and my brother was self-sufficient. So, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's definitely been a long time coming, but I have seen so many of those L's so far. It's like everywhere I look and you never know if it's just that factor of it's new and you're seeing it. So you're picking up on it and you're mm -hmm. noticing it, but they, it seems like everywhere. No, I'd say it, it's off to a really Pretty good start, I would tell you. No, and 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 please thank your dad for for uh, returning back to the Jeep brand for me, please. <laughs> He's probably going to buy another one. Um, I've been, you know, telling him to test drive everything, but he's he's getting ready to uh, to replace the WK2 and sent him pictures of that <laughs> of the WL and and he uh, was like, hmm. The, might have to buy one okay yeah the, and the drivability i think getting behind the wheels but i had the same conversation with my dad last week and he's had i don't know how many wks but four or five at least and just i didn't drive it i drove a wagon here because it's a long trip and um i i, did, I wish i would have taken it because it, yeah he knows the car so well and i think just once you get by for me personally um, getting behind the wheel is just such a step level improvement over the the WK2. It's it's it, the driving dynamics are really special. I mean, we we were I mean our benchmarks were, you know, truly German sedans, and and I think that you know the two row especially gets really close to uh, driving dynamics that we've never seen in a Jeep. I mean, air suspension definitely plays a factor, uh, but. Yeah, a man. lot of really, really slick engineering went into the, the the suspension, the setup, the geometry, the the adaptive part of the air suspension. To your point, I mean, there's yeah, there was a little bit of black magic in there, but they they really nailed it. <laughs> the the quirky part I didn't realize was in the Grand Cherokee is as I was rolling through menus the other day was that Fam Cam was in the Grand Cherokees now. Oh Fam yeah. Cam. And, and, you know, it's pretty cool because, you know, I've been on road a couple of times on road trips now and it's okay. 
my, my oldest, we generally relegate to the back because she can be the most difficult on a road trip, um, <laughs> but she doesn't mind it. But it's, you know, it's sometimes you're like, okay, I'm scared to ask, is, is, does anyone need to stop? Or, hey, are you anyone hungry? So it's like, I don't even know if they're sleeping. And so uh, my wife, I'm like, hey, cut on the camera. Let's see if they're asleep. And it's so cool because it gives you a camera view of each of the, so you can look at the second row, you can look at the third row. And then if you click on any of the individual seating positions, it'll zoom in it right zooms there. zooms in. It's so nuts. And it's, it's not necessarily for spying on your kids, but, you know, checking on your pets or doing exactly what I did is I wonder if, you know, little Billy is sleeping in the seat and well, I can mm -hmm. check without having to look back there, take my eyes off the road. And it's great because the passenger and you can literally zoom in on e any given seating position and get a close up view. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not at the infant stages anymore, but it would have been nice back in the day. <laughs> Is that kid exactly. asleep? I mean, is he coughing? It, What's going on? <laughs> mm -hmm. Or you just hear that little cough or whatever. And someone's reaching and climbing over a seat to look and see and whatever. Exactly. Yep. No, so my guess solves. is if, if, yeah, if I had, you know, my kids were still yeah, babies or whatever, and we had this in the car, this would be on like the entire time. Yeah. It solves that problem that everybody solves with those like mirrors, mirrors. that mount to the headrests that always seem kind of like they'd be a projectile in the event of a crash. Yeah. So it's, it's brilliant. Um, I, I wouldn't have thought of that. It was quirky. I loved it. Or it's not just, it's a feature that I enjoyed when I discovered it. So also front rear facing off-road cameras in that. So it's, there's a lot of tech in there. <laughs> you got the capability and the family balance. Yes. Yeah. Like, will the kids stay asleep while crawling through Moab? So, Scott, there was one question that I didn't get to ask you uh, back in the fall was, and I think, I can't remember if it was a, the Wagoneer or the Grand Cherokee presentation, but you're talking about how they could stream video now. Yes. Is there still a DVD player in it somewhere just in case? No, no DVD player. So the okay. problem with the <laughs> DVD player in the WK, because I had a couple of them with it, is that it took up literally more than half your center console because okay. you had to put the DVD player somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now you really got the best of everything. So if you truly want to watch a movie, um, yeah, Amazon, Netflix, all of those. And you can, as you know, you can download them. So if you don't have Wi-Fi, right. you can play them remotely. Um, and for me, my, I believe it or not, I still have cable television in my house. Um, and there's an app for that. So I just logged into my cable provider app and uh, it was just... <laughs> It's watching so regular good. so so they the kids had two live streaming televisions in the back seat with remotes they could watch independently yeah the, oh the boys God. on xbox with the other ones watching i don't know survivor reruns of season 18 uh, uh and the third one's in the back seat just totally chill because she had it reclined and yeah. you know, air conditioning so um it, it was a piece of tranquility we got along better in the wagon here than we do in our house it was unbelievable <laughs> I, that's crazy when i was like 14 my parents took us on this massive road trip across most of the midwest colorado wyoming whatever i read seven books because there was nothing <laughs> else to do i, I know and i uh, laugh at when, when they say they're they're bored or like oh, you know this are you kidding i mean so you have infinite amount of entertainment at right. your disposal so no you're, you're you're fine and no it was uh it was actually a very uneventful trip because of the car though i am gonna is hundred percent the car and, and needless to say i i enjoy the technology too so you know like even the the level two autonomy i'm i i have trust issues um and you know letting go of the wheel or not letting go of the wheel because you have to keep hands on but the car does truly take over is a phenomenal system wow i mean and i i find myself using it far more than i ever expected mm -hmm. not on daily driving but long highway trips Yep. It's good to relax. It is really, really nice to have the ability to just go, I can really relax now and not have to pay attention like I'm, you know, white knuckled the whole time. And, and to do that for a half an hour at a time, it makes a big difference. Needless to say, the massaging heated seats, that's a nice to have too. But um, there's other tech features that, that make a big difference. Did So did you ever notice it while you're using that system, because clearly like your brain starts to float away when you're using the system, right? You know, you're not fully there. You're still there, but you're not fully there. I found every now and then if, when I've been in vehicles like that, I'm like, why am I, am I doing 62 miles an hour? Why? Because you're just, you start to think about other things. The car's reading traffic and it's just staying with traffic. 
but because you're with traffic, you're not really like, I, I felt like I, I wasn't as a, in as much of a hurry because I wasn't fully intent on being a race car driver and bobbing through traffic. I was just well, like, yeah, I think you're right. There is something that when the car's in control of doing it, you know, cause when I'm controlling the, 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 the skinny pedal alone, I'm just, well, yeah, I, I'm just going to probably as fast as the car in front of me. Will let. Oh, I'm kidding. Uh, but no, the car's in control. Yeah, <laughs> I, think you're, I think it's Allegedly. part of that whole, whole reason I relax more is because, you know what, I'm just going to let the car drive for a little bit. And, and when you do, the, you, you're right. You're not concerned about the speed. You're not, you're not as intently focused on all these different variables, watching every mirror for every second because you know that the car, after a while, I mean, my level of confidence was, was, was supreme. I mean, I, I, some of the trust issues became very comfortable and confident with the system um, very quickly, very quickly. So is it, is it a system that, and you have to pardon me, I haven't done any research on, on Stellantis <laughs> autonomy right now. Yeah. I apologize. Is it something that's more interstate based or can you use it on city streets? Our, ours is uh, all roads right now. It's an all yep. roads based. So it, it can be used in yeah all, all situations. Um, so it's not the, the blue highway uh, system that I think you're referring to. Right. Um, that's a full hands off. So ours does require you to, to, to keep your hands on the, the wheel. Um, but if, by doing that, if you started to nod off, the, the car is watching you. It does have cameras. Um, and it has, it, it even did it's me too. Not that I wasn't paying attention as much as I should, but it will warn you once and say, listen, we don't think you're alert and you need to hit okay to acknowledge this. And if you don't, it'll get louder. Then the third time it'll, it'll actually just give it a quick stab at the brake pedal to kind okay. of wake you up. Uh, then after that, it'll, it'll start slowing itself down in Great case of a medical driver. emergency. So, yeah, I mean, just to, there That's are funny. safety measures in place for, you know, an accident or someone that does doze off. Mm -hmm. So this ties into something that I think once the announcement came out, there was like a huge flurry of talk and then it's kind of subsided, but the off-road cruise control that was discussed briefly, what's, uh, <laughs> well, I don't even know where to start or where to go with this one, but is that, how does that work? How is it going to be incorporated? Uh, is it, how is it being test? Like, are you referencing Chris, like the summon feature? Like you can summon your Jeep to the trailhead kind of thing? That was one of them, but I think there was also something, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's been a bit, but something about basically just off-road autonomous driving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I'd say we're, we're, we're probably still defining it, but there are, are clearly use cases from owners. Again, this is just feedback to go, you know, I wish that my Jeep could do this, or I've been in a situation, or would you ever see yourself needing this kind of technology, or how could you use it? And and that's really our, our kind of guiding light, and, and I'm very familiar with the video that that you're referencing, and if you if you look at how it's depicted there, you'll see kind of a, an example of that use case, I think of, of you wanting to be outdoors and enjoy the activity, but at the same time, not needing your car, but needing it at a different time. And it just takes care of it for you. I mean, the Jeep has gotta be your ultimate tool outdoors and off-road and adventures. And I think that's really that next level of how do you crack that code and, and, and make your car, you know, truly autonomous, not just on the roads, but off-road too. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Just expansion of a tool. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, I, I think one of the big applications and helpful points for the on-road semi-autonomous or autonomous driving is uh, most people have to, you know, drive a fair ways to just to get to the trailhead and you don't realize it, but you know, on-road driving can be stressful and alleviating, you know, even, in our ATV and UTV side of things, like when we made the jump from a, you know, almost 15 year old pickup to a three year old pickup, we noticed that we were less tired when we got somewhere. And that meant we could enjoy it more when we were there. And I, I think the integration of systems like this, you know, for on road use and, and even just a more relaxing vehicle on the road is also something that's going to help people get further and further into it as well. So maybe they won't even need the off-road autonomy. Maybe they'll just, you know, be totally rested and ready to rock when they get there. But it, yeah, cool but, it, but and it's one of those things. It's it's kind of like that 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 you know extra layer of capability. It's there if you need it. Mm -hmm. Yep, there if you need it. Yeah. Well, just like uh, those winch, <laughs> that winch and those shackles <laughs> that you hope you don't have to use. But so 
I'm going to actually start to wrap up the show. Uh, we've been going for, for quite a bit now. Yeah. Uh, so I'll do it real fast. We, you can rate and review the show on iTunes. Uh, you can do it wherever podcasts are found. We're, we're everywhere. Um, you can like and subscribe to the YouTube <laughs> channel because we do post the video. We share pictures. Uh, my buddy Ron only watches the YouTube channel now because he got tired of having it. He would listen to the show and then he would go back and watch the show because he would want to see all the things we talked about. I was like, sorry, Ron. I appreciate both views. Uh, uh, you can follow Jeep on all social platforms. It's like at Jeep. That, that's yeah. it. That's it. Easy to find. <laughs> and you will be there with a number of friends. Uh, Scott reminded us. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you can follow Hooniverse, The Hooniverse on Twitter, The Real Hooniverse on Instagram. You can read our writing at Hooniverse. UTV driver, ATV rider, and everyday driver. All of those together is so hard sometimes. Man, I know. I, <laughs> trust me, I, I know. There's a theme for naming automotive things. <laughs> drive, <laughs> ride. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Drive, ride, yeah. drive. And uh, and no, and, and to everybody listening that stuck with us through uh, our upcoming landmarks, we're very appreciative and uh, stay tuned. By the Big time you've coming. listened to this show, we have reached, we basically, this is the second year of the podcast and we doubled our second year, Scott. So, mm. hey, we, congratulations. That's yeah, it was kind of the first year we were kind of like, we don't know what this means. It's the first year, but the second yeah. year we're like, oh, it doubled. Like, that's a big deal. <laughs> wow. No, that's, that's, that's really impressive. No, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, now I feel like we're fishing for compliments. <laughs> <laughs> so you can follow Ross at no, not like the one from friends. I did it from memory that time. So I think it was yeah, right. That's it. No, yeah, you, okay. you got it. <laughs> and I'm at episodes, over- you got it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm at overlanding dad and that's it. That's the show. We've done it. Thank you, Scott. Scott, thank you. We really appreciate having you on. And, and this has been a great chat. Yeah, no, no, no problem. I really enjoyed it. It's always fun to talk about Jeeps and then, you know, hey, let's look, give it a couple of months and uh, get a couple of new more announcements out, some new sheet metal, and uh, I'll be more than happy to do it again. <laughs>